Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoy this review, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all you would like to share, leave them down in the comment section below. Weezer, Pacific Daydream. Weezer, legendary American rock, pop rock group formed in 1992. I've been a big fan of these guys for a long time. Their music really got me through a lot of times in high school with relatable, nerdy lyrics and catchy songwriting abilities. Although they definitely have one of the most spotty careers out of any rock band today. Decent amount of hits, but also a good amount of misses too. With this album here, Pacific Daydream often considered to be their worst, even worse than Ratitude I've heard some people say. 2017 Weezer. That was the time I was really delving into repeated listens of the band's studio albums, and also when I was a lot more of a pop head than I would like to admit. I mean, hell, I remember even liking this album back then due to its clean, polished pop sound and catchy hooks. So three years later, how do I stand on it now? Let's find out as I review this album track by track. We'll start off with the singles, with there only being one official commercial single. I don't really count promotional singles, I know five were released prior. Starting off with Feels Like Summer, which when coming off of the White Album, their last album, it certainly is a step down with just how squeaky clean this production is and the drop-influenced chorus structure and Rivers' less than stellar falsetto. However, the melodies are pretty infectious and the track flows together pretty well. It's a really solid pop rock song, but of course with the Weezer connotation, it really doesn't stand up to their catalog. Lyrically though, it's actually quite melancholic about loss, but reminiscing about summer. It's pretty heartbreaking. But regardless, I do enjoy the track. Now for the rest of the songs. The opener Mexican Fender definitely opens up this album pretty strong with some nice guitar work from Brian, pretty retrospective of songs from u -Bait. Which is fitting because this was apparently a white album throwaway. The verses carry some real gritty weight, and Rivers delivers these lyrics with some decent amount of volume. It's probably the rockiest and most nostalgic track on this entire album, which, take that for what you will. Lyrically, Rivers mentions that it's actually about real situations that happened with this woman, getting to know her, but she's got a boyfriend. I really like this song as well, worth a listen. Beach Boys is a track that Rivers mentioned he tried to mimic the style and sound of the Beach Boys, and I say it's not a horrible job at that. It does feel a lot more like a tribute than a full-blown inspiration in my eyes. Anyway, the verses definitely don't pack too much of a punch, just some shrill guitar playing from Brian, but they transition into the chorus surprisingly well, adding in some airy percussion and bass playing. Although the tune overall doesn't really pack that much impact, the chorus feels a bit lighter than I think it should, and the track just kind of breezes on by. I can honestly do without this song. Skip. Happy Hour, which became the other single from this album post-release, and I can definitely see why. It's got a very similar vibe to Feels Like Summer, but instead of being more electropop, it's got a bit of a pop rock aesthetic to it, yet still a summery accent to this instrumental. The percussion has a good amount of weight, and I really love the melody of these verses. But unfortunately, not all of the track sits well with me, mainly that chorus where, unlike Feels Like Summer, despite both being underbaked, this one just feels like no fun, no eccentric falsetto, it almost feels really dour. Lyrically, however, it is kind of fitting to that whole dour vibe, about being afraid of loneliness, wanting to be a part of a happy hour, and be a part of society, but kind of knowing you're not really going to fit in. It's an alright song, and I think I'll keep it around. Weekend Woman is probably one of the lesser appreciated hits, in my opinion, off this album. It has this immediately gripping tropical style with higher pitched guitar playing, not to mention the ch ch and ahs going on in the background only making this tune transport me to a beach in the summertime. Plus, I adore the chorus here. It's probably one of my favorites on the album, definitely that pop rock chorus you would hear on the radio. So catchy, kinda shallow as well, but I can look past that. Lyrically, it's about meeting this woman on the weekend, but not being able to meet her again throughout the weekdays. This one's definitely worth revisiting. Great song. QB Blitz was, at the time, my favorite song off this album, and that still hasn't changed today. It's the closest this album gets to a ballad, and I just find it so warm and endearing, with River's vocals definitely sounding like something from Pinkerton or even the Blue Album. However, this cleaner instrumental does make that clash a little bit, but it still helps to form this somber melody that just sounds right at home with this band. Lyrically, it's about being alienated from society, not having anyone to love or even just to hang out with but that's really hard to do because he doesn't even like most people in the first place. Beautiful song, definitely still my favorite from this album. Sweet Mary unsurprisingly features a very sweet instrumental to back up that title. The synth work is very elegant and prim with the drum work and guitar playing accentuating that, even incorporating some trumpet work as well in the background. 
Unfortunately, not too much here really packs a punch. It's all very gentle, relaxing, and in all honesty, doesn't really blend in with most of the album in the process. Lyrically, Rivers mentions this track has a Catholic message to it despite not being a Catholic himself, where the song kind of talks about Mary, a figure in the Christian Bible, mother of Jesus, and having this spiritual figure looking after him. It's a nice message, but to me, the song overall is just okay. Get Right is yet another track I think went under the radar for most people. I love the opening guitar work, and especially when paired with the rushing, energetic drum work that carries on for most of the tune, it's a pretty infectious instrumental, along with a catchy chorus to boost. Rivers has a pretty melodic delivery. It really blends in pretty smoothly with his beat. Not too much else to really mention about this track, other than how lyrically it's about being confident around the person you love. And this track does have a confident feeling to it. Great song. La Mancha Screwjob opens up with these cricket noises, but ends up converting those into an instrumental with a nice alt-pop rock flair. It's really enjoyable as well, may just be another favorite of mine. What is another favorite of mine on this album is that chorus. It's a full pop chorus, no questions about it, with repeated words and Rivers' vocals feeling pretty alive. It does sound like something a bit more of a pop-focused track from Yubei would sound like. Lyrically, it's about doing this relationship right, becoming famous and happy in the process. Fantastic song, also worth a listen. And finally, the closer Any Friend of Diane's is a little bit of a lackluster closer. I'm just really not feeling this chorus overall. It's so airy and unimpactful, it's probably one of the most boring choruses they've done in a long time. Also, this instrumental just really feels like nothing. It's incredibly milquetoast with its commercial sounding guitar strumming and uncomfortably muted percussion. It just falls so far in the background and makes the track lose so much energy. And lyrically, at the time, Rivers was thinking about all the fantastic women who really helped him out during Weezer's early years, with this one being about his boss at Domino's. Sweet personal message, but the track kind of falls flat for me. Shame. Overall, this Weezer album, I definitely didn't hate it, although I do see why people did. Comparing this album to some of Weezer's earlier material is mostly impossible. It barely feels like the Weezer a lot of people grew up with, and I totally understand that change. However, as a standalone album, by itself, I really enjoy it. It's got some nice hooks, catchy summary instrumentals, and Rivers hasn't lost his touch vocally. I urge you, if you're into pop music and can open your mind and avoid that this is Weezer, I think it's definitely worth hearing. I'm feeling a pretty strong 8 out of 10 on this album. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.